All right. So our gospel reading for today comes from Matthew, the 10th chapter, and it begins with these words. Jesus said to the twelve, a disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave to be like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will the maligned of those of his household? So have no fear, do not be afraid, for nothing is covered that will be uncovered, and nothing secret that will become known. When I say to you, in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops, do not fear those who will kill you. The body cannot be, the body cannot be killed, and neither can the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? You, not one of them, will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges before me others... I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father and daughter against his mother and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves the father or the mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Here ends our reading. So grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I'm sure some of you are going, now, what in the world is he going to do with what he just put before us? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Hopefully, this will resonate with some of you. How many of you are familiar with National Geographic? Okay, good. I'm getting some hands. Okay, so this won't fall. This analogy will work. Um, I'm, I've always been captivated by National Geographic, especially their photographs, right? Some of the I can just say that, and you guys are probably picturing different images in your mind from National Geographic. Um, but what a lot of people don't know um, is that one of the most famous photographers in National Geographic is a, mo a, a man named DeWitt Jones. Right? He's taken probably some of the most iconic photos that National Geographic has ever published. And a few years ago, National Geographic made a film um, that he, he was the creator for. Um, and it's a short film called Celebrate What's Right with the World. Right? You can go and YouTube this now. It's out there. But um, again, the title, Celebrate What's Right with the World. Um, and in this film, uh, DeWitt Jones talks about how difficult it is for photographers to get great shots. He talks about how they'll go to a location and they're expecting the lighting to be just right or they're expecting uh, there to be sun and he's like, they'll get there and it's raining or, right, the thing that they were supposed to photograph isn't there anymore or someone didn't bring the right camera or someone didn't bring, bring the right lens. But he talks about that the perceptions of our situations shape our lives. And what he asks of us is to focus on the positive rather than dwelling on the negative. He asks us to think about what's wrong with the situation that I'm in and investigate existing possibilities and opportunities. I think it's timely advice for us. Because unfortunately, we live in a world dominated by fear and competition. We are prone to adopting a scarcity mindset rather than embracing a vision of possibility. And so Jesus' timely words for today of do not be afraid or fear not are actually rather important 
because they provide comfort and encouragement, reminding us to find joy and courage in life's challenges. And so in this morning's gospel lesson, Jesus tells his disciples to do not be afraid or fear not without immediately saying to them, God will protect them. Instead, Jesus warns them of rejection and slander and persecution and family strife. This doesn't exactly seem like encouragement. But if we consider DeWitt Jones' theory of possibilities, then we have to remind ourselves that sometimes as our faith wanes, fear creeps in. It's amazing how often God says, do not be afraid in the Bible or fear not. Does anyone know how many times that phrase is uttered in Scripture? Any takers? 33, higher. Higher. Good guess, but no, not the price is right. 70 is a good guess, but keep going higher. Keep going. 300, we're getting close. A little bit higher than that. 365 times. Exactly right, right? That is a do not be afraid or fear not for every single day of the year. These are comforting words, and oftentimes when we hear the phrase fear not or do not be afraid, it is immediately preceded by good news. And so Jesus assures the disciples that they will be safe despite trouble. And so this morning, Jesus gives his disciples and us hope. Jesus assures the disciples that God will account for every hair on their head, even though their opponents may in fact harm them. Even in dire circumstances, the promise of protection from God gives them hope that they will have eternal life with God in heaven. Because we continue to see darkness in the world around us, Jesus' words are just as relevant today as they were when he spoke them over 2,000 years ago. Jesus tells us today that God loves us in the dark and scary times. I often hear people say to me, especially when things are challenging, I don't even know if I should be praying to God because he's got other things to worry about. But the reality is, Jesus says God loves every aspect of our lives, no matter how insignificant. God cares for us. He counts the hairs on our heads, and he counts every sparrow. And as Christians... As those of us rooted in Christ, we can understand. Even when we're tempted and in danger, God knows and cares deeply about each and every one of us, no matter what we're going through. And if it's important to you, it is important to God. And so as we gather here today, we are very aware of our problems. Right? I heard an announcement this morning at the beginning of your service. You're thinking about the future, and right, maybe the money's not there. Maybe the things that you are expecting to happen aren't going the way that you thought. But that's okay. Because God is with us in the midst of the messiness of life. We have just gone through a pandemic that has lasted over three years. Many in our communities are afraid and don't know what will happen as we venture into another phase of life. There's been a lot of illness and death, and the social and economic effects have been horrible. And we must deal with the painful facts of societal unrest and violence in our country and around the world. Just turn on the news, right? We know that things are happening, and during these challenging times, it is easy for fear to take hold of our hearts and minds and leave us feeling helpless. I see it every day. 
people who are overwhelmed. But even when facing temptations and dangers, we can be sure that God knows and cares about every detail of our lives. And so the challenge that I lay before you is this. We must resist giving up. Jesus knows fear. Jesus was frightened in the Garden of Gethsemane before his execution. Though afraid, Jesus trusted God's power and love even in that dark place. Jesus believed God was with him. And he says to us today, fear not. Do not be afraid. Jesus' words remind us that we are not alone. We are not alone when we feel like the world is coming in around us. God is with us. Jesus reminds us very clearly today that faith can help us overcome fear and darkness. God has a plan even when we don't know why we're scared. Worries can strengthen our faith and draw us closer to God. We overcome our fears by courageously facing them and trusting in God's love. Just recently, I was, um, I was away for some training in the Air Force. And I had a, a, a young airman who was going through a really rough time. And we were in a really rigid training environment. We were doing a lot of weird things. It's a story for another time. But we were uh, finishing up an exercise. And as we're sitting down and we're eating our MREs um, and we're, we're, we're talking, he comes up to me and says, you're a chaplain, right? I was like, I am? He's like, I need to talk to you. And I was like, all right. I was like, well, we'll talk. He's like, I need to talk to you now. This airman was in a dark place. He was concerned about a great number of things that were going on in his life. And as we discussed, he laid some things before me. And I realized in that moment, much like many of us, we don't always listen carefully to the things that God is telling us. And so today we should hear very clearly. Do not be afraid. Fear not. Today, in this gospel reading, we are reminded of the power of perspective and how important it is to pay attention to what's good instead of dwelling on what's wrong. It's very easy for us to look at the world around us and assume, well, that's it. I don't know how many times I've had conversations with people recently who are trying to convince me that the end of the world is near. People have been saying that for a long time, and yet we are still here. In a world where fear and competition seem to be normal, Jesus' timely words of do not be afraid or fear not give us hope and comfort. So let's remember that God is with us. Protecting us and guiding us through life's difficulties as we deal with life's problems and challenges. I think back to a time not that long ago. Um, I, was, uh, I was in seminary, and I had just spent time working at a level one trauma center in Danville, Pennsylvania, right? So level one trauma center, worst of the worst, right? I was the trauma and surgical chaplain, and I'd spent all summer dealing with a rash of cases where uh, people had fallen off ladders, right? Ladders are the number one cause of trauma in the United States. And I had seen one gentleman who fell from nine feet and died, right? Nine feet from a ladder and he died. I saw another man who fell six feet from a ladder and he wound up becoming a quadriplegic. And so uh, there were other various instances and I remember going through this and thinking, wow, 
I don't know what I would do in that situation if someone in my family were to fall off a ladder. And I remember coming home and my wife and I decided, right, we had been away from each other for a while. We decided to go on a trip. And uh, we were out walking around. And when I came back, I noticed my phone had 57 missed calls. And when I looked at, I saw massive voicemails and it was my mom. And my mom said, your dad has fallen off of a ladder and it doesn't look good. My dad was staining our log cabin. When I say that, please don't think Abraham Lincoln. It was more like a ski chalet, right? So very big, right? Um, and he was at the apex of the house, so 33 feet. And so he fell all the ways from the top of that um, apex, all the ways down to the ground. And uh, he hit the ground and uh, crushed his femur, right? Broke his pelvis, broke both of his ankles, broke his arm in six places, but no head trauma, right? But still very challenging situation. And I remember thinking in that moment, how do I get through this? And so these words resonate with me, right? Fear not and do not be afraid. Because when we rely on these words, it is our faith that gives us strength and courage. Knowing that God loves us and loves everything about us no matter how big or how small. So even when things seem overwhelming, let's turn to God in times of darkness and fear to find comfort and the constant care that he offers us. So may we leave this place today with the power of his love to change us, and to shine brightly as lights of hope Encourage and a world that needs them. Amen.